really exciting for me because um, this is the first time that we have an archive like this um, that shows that shows what the fiber can do. Um, another thing I was playing around with this year was oh, there's almonds. Um, making felts with the hemp. So you might have noticed my hat, which is felted hemp. Um, and if you Google does hemp felt, the internet says no. Um, and my theory on what's happening is that the lignin um, in the fiber when I pour hot water on it is kind of leaching out and reforming in a mat. Um, and the reason why I think that's what's happening is because I made these felts, which are fiber from our trials. And then I made this one, which was um, chemically degummed is the word they use, but it just means removing the lignin fiber from China. And um, it's very soft, you'll notice, but it's also not staying together as well. So that's why I think that it's the lignin in the fiber that's actually holding it together. Um, because the reason why wool works so great as a felt is because if you were to look at the fiber under a microscope, it has a structure similar to a pine cone where it has all these scales and as they get hot with water, hot water, they open up and then they lock together. Same thing your hair would do. But, um, but hemp doesn't have a structure like that. So something else is going on. Um, and if anyone has any other ideas, I'm open. Um, this is another felted piece that I made. Um, again, we got the field threaded fiber and the water redded fiber and I just thought the, the back of it looks really cool. Um, and my, my purpose with this piece I think was just to show um, how strong it is with like so little fiber because you can see it's holding all that together with just a very thin layer um, of fiber on the back. Um, the reason to rotate the fibers um, what would that be, 90 degrees, is to kind of mimic a weave structure. Um, so you can't tell as easily, but the same thing is done in these ones. And that's also going to ensure that the fibers shrink evenly. Um, so that was what I was doing here. And I also thought it was really interesting. Um, they make kind of like these tessellating patterns. And I noticed the same thing happened um, when I made water redded fiber, um, so that's just like fiber from like the stock that when it's fully redded in the water, you can pull it apart a little bit and it's almost like an accordion and it makes these like tessellating shapes and I thought these were really similar to that. Um, and then this is a little felted pouch that I made. This is a woven pouch. This is from 2022 crop. This is 2023. There might be other fun things in here. Um, and now I want to turn it over to Janet Curry. She's a Vermonter and um, she's also a hemp farmer. Um, not growing any in Vermont this year, but the past couple of years she did. And she's recently founded a company here that's doing really cool things and she brought some samples to share with us. So please. Okay. <laughs> so hi everybody, I'm Janet Curry. Um, and I'm the co-founder of Vilhemp USA. Um, Vilhemp started out in Hungary, um, and it is a uh, product that is made with natural polymers and hemp. Um, so I brought um, what, these are reusable um, products. These are single use, so it's like a solo cup, you know, type of thing. Um, so essentially how this kind of all started is uh, I started I've always wanted to be involved in hemp fiber because uh, it's cheaper. You don't have to hire people. You can. It's just like growing hay. Uh, we see 50,000 seeds per acre. Um, we use. Uh, we're in and out in about 70 days, um, and it's just like hay. You cut it, you rake it, you make sure it gets down to that 10% moisture rate. We bale it. The only thing difference between what she does and what I do is, <laughs> is that uh, as soon as it comes off the baler, it automatically goes undercover. And Laura lets hers uh, kind of weather and rest. So that's one of the things that, that is somewhat different. Um, when it goes through the decortication process, um, just so you understand, um, yeah. 
So, just to get an idea. Oh, I'm sorry. I'm really okay. So, just so everybody understands, the the fiber part is like 20% of, of the plant. That's the outside of the plant. The inside is the herd, and that's what I'm interested in. So, this is like a, a perfect marriage. Um, and so, one of the things that uh, we are working in right now is the fact that um, the how I got hooked up with the Hungarians is that they heard about me. They came over and looked at the bales I had, and they all went to Hungary. And they all went into these products. And I opened my mouth one day and said, hey, do you have anybody distributing in the United States? And they said, no. And that was April 2023, and here we are. Um, we are in the process of getting our funding together where we're going to have uh, compounding and manufacturing in five different stages of the United States. Um, right now we have 600 acres of hemp growing in Alabama. I'm heading up the Northeast. We're going to have two in the Midwest and out on the West Coast. Um, this, our products are, or any kind of biodegradable plastic right now is very much in high demand. Um, clearly we're being choked to death by petroleum-based plastics and we, we need to do something. We as the consumers have the control over really everything. Um, you know, everybody goes into a restaurant, they get one of those, they get a straw, they say it's biodegradable. It's not. I've taken those straws, I've spent my own money and had them re-engineered. There's PPE in them, which is a polypropylene, okay? I hate to, you know, break anybody's bubble, but. Um, ours, you could take this, I could put it through a wood chip or put it in a manure vat and stick it right back out in the field. That's why our tagline is cultivate, consume, compost. I don't know about anybody around here, but like I, you know, I can't throw plastic away. Like I, you know, yogurt containers and things like that. Like we try to find something with it because I, I'm just getting to the point where I cannot, and we know that China is not buying our plastics and it's just been a big kind of big, a big fallacy. So needless to say, um, we've getting quite a bit of attention. Um, this is the granulate that we compound that we put in uh, mold injection machines and this is this is what we're making. We also are starting, we just signed a contract to make some car parts and we just signed a contract with Jamaica because Jamaica just banned plastic on July 1st and had nothing to replace it with. So we make these, we make bags, we make cutlery. I have a, uh, we have a, a vendor table that shows a few of the things that we're making. Um, you can visit our website if anybody has any questions. You know, please feel free to say, "Hey, I saw you at Border View, and I, I'd like to know more about it." Um, but we're very, very proud of this, and I'm proud of this. It's being a Vermonter. Um, I'm my other co-founder is a woman named Amy Quindacy. She lives in Chicago. So this is a women. This is a women-owned business, um, and that's the other part I'm very proud of. Uh, because no offense to the gentleman in this room, but Usually farming is very male dominated. And trust me, I have a love affair with my tractor, okay? I don't get to be on it very much anymore because I'm in an office. But Vermonters have always been individuals who make changes. And that is one of the nicest thing about being a Vermonter. And if you're a transplant, that's okay too because we'll accept you. <laughs> Point fingers. But really, the thing here is that we can make a huge change in, the, in how we are using our plastics and what, we're, what we are consuming. And so what I'm looking to do here is to start doing partnerships with companies like, for instance, Cabot. I don't know if everybody's affiliated with Cabot, but I really want to, my vision and my fantasy is go to Cabot CEO and say, hey, we want you to start putting all your yogurt, your cottage cheese, your sour cream and everything in a container that can be biodegradable. Period, that's it. Let me get back to the compost part of this. Okay, so if I stick this, it's whole, we are home and industrial comp compostable, which means you have to have the environment, you have to have the enzymes. So, like my, I have a home composter, I'm kind of gonna sort of assume everybody else does here. If I take one of my forks and stick it in my compost, it's gonna start breaking down in 28 days. So it depends what the micro and the environment is. If I, if I cut it up, it's gonna it's gonna break down faster. Um, not that I'm promoting um, littering, but if you were using one of her spoons, or if your child was using one of her spoons and threw it out the window, it's gonna break down. It's 
going to break down and it's not going to leach in any kind of microplastics or anything like that into the into our um, our waterways. The difference between natural polymer and a petroleum-based polymer is temperature. So you're going to have some you, you'll have some issues. You can't throw it in a microwave. You can't throw it in a dishwasher because of the natural polymer part of it. Advise if someone comes to our website and buys something, we, we put a little safety sheet that says, hey, you know, this is this is only good to about I think it's like 170, 170. Um, but but <laughs> that's always going to be the big you know the big problem between that petroleum base. You know, you can microwave, you can do all those things with it. Um, we use these in my house, and I just wash the dishes and. I mean, it's these are um, these have a little bit of a shine on them, uh, which is which is sprayed on. Um, it's a little, it's it's wearing down a little bit, but not not a whole lot. Let's put it that way. Um, this is more of a single use, so like in your party or hospital or nursing home, things like that. This is this is what we want. If you're going to use something single use, you want to make sure that's going to break down at, at some, you know, at some point pretty pretty quickly. Um, so um, the big thing here that we're you know working on is making sure that we are replacing the pro uh, replacing products that we are all very familiar with, like solo cups. Okay, so people use solo cups. We are developing the tool right now right now to make that. Um, these are mold injection. This is a big film, and it's basically a, a form that presses down. So, we are working on making different tools. I'm working with uh, a group at Vermont Technical College right now because um, we also make 3D filament, which is pretty cool and exciting. Um, so, if you go to our website or if you look me up on LinkedIn, you'll see some of the things that are being made with the 3D filament, which is just really cool. Um, I know that they're starting a 3D institute at, uh, I'm sorry, I know it is Vermont State University. I'm sorry, I'm old. I'm gonna call it BTC, Castleton University. <laughs> okay, so I apologize if I'm offending anybody, but um, they're starting to you know, make some changes um, at BTC where they're starting to incorporate manufacturing and agriculture together so we can start you know, turning this, turning this around. I would love to see hemp growing in all of these fields um, because we have a use for it. And I will tell you right now that I don't think that there will ever be enough hemp grown to replace the amount of plastic that's being used. And that's a really wild statement to say. And you could say, oh, this crazy lady on the 25th said this. But we use a lot of plastic, not just Vermont. I'm talking everywhere. So. Um, really excited to share this all with you today and if you have any questions and I've got some business cards here if anybody wants to take them um, and if there's any other questions I I could go on and on and we would all be here and you'll feel like you've been held hostage. Yeah.